I'm with a pirate on a remote island, and you're making me dig a hole. Imagine starting your life all over again. Oh, wow. Leaving behind everything you know. Now it's the fun part. We're going to take <laughs> up the mountain. For something completely different. He's just destroyed the garden. Oh, no. How the hell did she get in? I'm Ben Fogel, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to live with the incredible people who've made this choice. What do you think this sort of environment has given you? Peace of mind, I'd say. A lot of people see the freedom in me and yearn for it, but they can't because they're stuck in that 95. In some of the most remote locations on Earth. You get wild animals in here? Yeah. yeah, we've had leopards coming through here. Honestly, just amazed it's standing. To get anything built out here in the middle of nowhere is a miracle. I'll discover their motivations. This is a childhood dream. I'm gonna make this a reality. How can they judge you in a courtroom without knowing you over something that just was a few seconds? And find out what it takes to create a new life in the wild. Anything I yeah. can do. Well, like... you can always take your shirt off. Today, I'm in the wilds of Australia, staying with Bet, who, 34 years ago, rejected a modern life for one closer to nature. You're nice and bright. You're, I like this, this kind of colour. Oh, that's good, because I'm a bit of a colourful character, they say. I'll discover what prompted her to leave civilization behind. I needed another life. I needed something with a bit of adventure. Learn of the stark challenges she's faced since moving here. They could have bulldozed me into the creek and nobody would have known. Oh, yeah, it just added to the animosity against me, I think. And discover why this wilderness has become her refuge. Oh, it's so nice to be here and cheering her. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. I don't normally get like this, but it's just... I don't get to share this with many people. My journey takes me over 15,000 kilometres to the other side of the world and Australia's second largest state, Queensland. This region of Australia is renowned for its lush rainforests, stunning coastline and fertile countryside. It's almost impossible to not feel a connection to nature here. This is suitably wild and tropical. The thing about eastern Australia is the further north you go, the less densely populated it is. We're nearly 1,500 kilometres from the nearest big city, and this feels like wild Australia. My host, Bet, lives in amongst these remote wetlands, and already I'm intrigued by the environment she's decided to call home. I don't really know what to expect. All I know about Bet is that she is an 80-year-old woman who lives out here alone. It's hot, it's humid, it's remote. This is a tough place. I'm fascinated to find out what kind of life she's carved out for herself. I turn off the dirt road and spot my host's home hidden in amongst the trees. Right, where is Bet? Hello? Bet? Hello? Hey! Oh, that's Sid. Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious is Sid yes, Vicious. Yes, because he's got a bit of a personality problem, so don't touch him. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh. I think I just tried on your toe. Don't you worry. I've got sturdy boots, Bet. Oh, steel cap boots. What's, what's the whistle for? It's to um, call to attention when I need help. <laughs> is that, am I your soldier? Yeah, exactly. You've got to get a uniform, though. You're nice and bright. You're, I like this, this kind of colour... Oh, that's good, because I'm a bit of a colourful character, they say. Are you? Yes, that's what I'm called sometimes around here, a colourful character. Looking at your house from here and the walk-in, it feels like you're very much part of nature here? Yes, I always say I'm nestled down in nature. Anything can move into the house. Could be a goanna, could be a snake, could be anything. So I'm just warning you. <laughs> you're warning me. Can I, can I have a look around the house then? Sure, I'd love you to come and have a look. I will avoid Sid Vicious for now. 79-year-old Bet married at 18 and lived in the coastal town of Byron Bay. In 1973, her marriage broke down. Her kids eventually grew up and left home and Bet began to enjoy her newfound freedom. But in 1980, she unexpectedly fell pregnant and found herself becoming a single parent all over again. In 1988, Bet took a holiday to the wetlands of North Queensland with her young daughter Nadia. While there, she came across an isolated, off-grid cabin surrounded by jungle forest. Despite its ramshackled appearance, it captivated Bet so much that she sold her home in Byron Bay 
quit her job as a social worker and moved into the wild cabin with her seven-year-old daughter. Nadia moved out 26 years ago, but Bet has remained surrounded by the wilderness. She's now connected to the grid and throughout the years has filled the place with mementos from her life. Yes, there is a bit. There's a bit oh, to look at, I think. Wow, Bet. Oh, this. you like? I love this whole style. I would describe it as rustic. I think so. <laughs> can, can, can we just go back on these snakes that you were mentioning? Yeah. You, you do have them in the house, do you, occasionally? Yeah. <laughs> Anything that lives out there pays me a visit every now and again. What, what are these strange chains? How do you flood out? Well, Mother Nature comes and she just comes in and just washes it out. How, how deep does the water go? Um, but mostly things I lift up, except this sofa. So I put that under there and the other one under there and pull the chain and lift the sofa up. <laughs> I love that. Snakes, floods. Bet really is living with the wilderness. And if I'm being honest, there are parts of the house that seem to have seen better days. Some people have come here in the past and go, oh, hell, does she live in this? But I love it. But I try not to mix with those people anymore, um, <laughs> which, which rather isolates me, but that's OK. The nearest big town is almost 30 kilometres away, which Bet has to drive to in order to get food and essential supplies. But given that she spends most of her time here alone, I wonder how she'll react with me staying in her house for the next few days. I'll show you where you're going to sleep tonight. So, I'm not staying in her house for the next few days. Right. Obviously no walls. Is it waterproof? Well, there's a leak up there. Yeah. See that piece of tin there? This one? That's it. It's going up there. I'd prefer no leaks in the roof, so I'd better try and get it covered up. Shall I actually climb up there? What yeah, do you think? I think it'd be OK for you to climb up. Do you think there's any snakes or spiders up there? Oh, probably. <laughs> probably. That's not the answer I wanted to hear, Beth. Well, I did have chooks and I got tired of hearing them being strangled by snakes, so I don't have chooks anymore. I'd, I'd quite like to be sure that there are no snakes or anything up there. Where do you think the leak is? It's over there more. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I've got the hole. Excellent. OK, that's the hole. There you are. Perfect. Put some more of this over to hold it down. No, 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 no. Back here onto the garden. And all off here? Yeah, all off there. Maybe if you rake up on the right-hand side a little bit more. No, 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 no. More where it's all dirt. I've got it. Job done. I'm hoping that will get me in Bet's good books. OK. I'm very sweaty. Well, right. You can always take a shirt off. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and control myself. <laughs> Well, now that I seem to have charmed my host, I wonder what she's planning for dinner. I don't know about you, I am pretty hungry. What, what do you do about food? Well, I have to tell you, I don't cook. You don't cook? No, no, I only cook for myself. I say, <laughs> I am not going to cook for you. OK. You've got to look after yourself. I've looked after enough. I've had four kids. I've looked after <laughs> enough people. Fair enough. So, kitchen's this way? Yep, around the corner, through there. Yes. Fridge is there, stove's around there. <laughs> OK. OK, just to have somebody in the kitchen cooking for me... OK. ..will be fantastic. Yeah, just you... make sure you do a good job, cos I'm very fussy. <laughs> no pressure. Has Bet got any idea how bad I am in the kitchen? I literally have no idea what to cook. What do you use to cook off? I don't think there's gas in the stove, is there? Uh, uh, yes. How often do you get in the oh kitchen? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes, I hear it. I hear it. We got it. We're there. Go and sit down and I shall make our dinner. I am out of my comfort zone, but I can only imagine what it must have been like for Bet when she moved here 34 years ago. What, what sort of state was this in when you first came here? Um... Well, I didn't have a tap to turn on. I, mean, I had to sort of hook together these big pipes. Mm -hmm. And out the back, I had to light the fire for the hot water. I rather liked that process. Did it ever feel overwhelming here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt, yeah. I mean, I have been really scared. I have felt really lonely. 
all of those things. But luckily, I've been able to overcome them because I love the place so much, I guess. You know, you'll go through hill and high water for something you love, won't you? And when you choose a difficult life, you just know that there are things that you've just got to get over and you don't dwell on them. It's clearly not always been an easy ride for my host. But I'm hoping this dish I'm whipping up will be one of her more positive experiences. The secret ingredients. You're not putting Vegemite in there. I really am. <laughs> 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 don't be scared. And don't be scared. <laughs> oh, well, I've overcome a few things. It's like eating your dinner, I suppose. I'll be able to cope. <laughs> OK, let me give you my verdict. Oh, dear. I think it's very nice. I think it needs... I think it could do with just something... Something else. <laughs> It's quite Moorish. No, it's not really. <laughs> Honestly, mm. I'm sorry. I really can't eat this. <laughs> I promise it won't make you violent, Do you cook Neil. at home very often? Is everybody mm. still alive in your family? <laughs> I like her feistiness. I like her fieriness. She's living here alone in the middle of the jungle, effectively. So I think you have to become tough. Not hard, though. I'm looking forward to getting to know the many, many different sides of, of Bet. I've just spent the night in an exposed shelter in the middle of the Australian bush. There was a lot of sounds last night. Whatever usually lives here liked my uh, changes that I put in. Goodness knows what it was. Right, Let's find out what Bet's up to, what we've got planned for today. OK, prepare yourselves, mosquitoes. I'm coming out. My host has lived in this old cabin for the past 34 years. Hello, Bet. And 26 of those have been on her own. I think she's still asleep. I suppose I can help myself. I suppose if you live out here on your own, there are no hours you have to stick to. Get up when, when you wake up. I'm going to give cooking one more shot and attempt breakfast. Surely I can't get it wrong with eggs on toast. Toaster. I've never seen such a complicated toaster. Oh, hello, Sid. Is that you, Bet? Yeah, I'm starving. Where's my breakfast? <laughs> Good morning. Did you sleep well? Yes, I did, actually. I'm hoping you're going to approve of my breakfast even more than uh, the dinner I made. <laughs> Wouldn't be hard, really, would it? <laughs> that is a cup of tea. White. Beautiful. Two. So much. You're welcome. So could I just sit down and wait for it? Please do. Oh, good. Where would you like your breakfast? Uh... Oh, well, actually, I always sit over there. Would you yeah. like to sit here? Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a seat swap. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Garnished. Oh, everything. So special. Yummy, yum. Mm. Mm, not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. It's maybe a little bit... Overdone, but it's all That's right. That's my specialty. You... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I...? <laughs> I'm relieved Bet's even attempting to eat this meal. Having lived alone for so long, I'm getting the feeling she likes things done her way. Do you, um, do you often ask for help? Not unless I really can't. If I can't help it, you know. Do you, you, you don't enjoy asking? No. Why not? Because I've had said to me, you know, oh, you're a woman and you'll never cope here on your own. And no, I don't like asking for help. <laughs> but anyway. Bet lives off her pension and only hires people for specific jobs when she has to. But now that I'm here, I wonder if I can be of any assistance. Yeah. When, when did you last test the pulley system on the... Uh... A long time ago. Shall I give you a hat? Shall we do a, a flood drill after breakfast? Oh, let's do that. <laughs> let's 
just tighten this up a little bit. OK, so let's take this one down. Put that one there. There we go. Right. There you go. There we go. Beautiful. Blood test is done. Now I'm ready. What a difference just another pair of hands makes. Say so that was a two-person job, really. It feels like the physicality of life here... It's going to get more difficult. Probably. Oh, absolutely. I'm aware of that. But we'll, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, how did I know you guys were going to be here? Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen in the future. Bet does have family and friends around the country who check in on her when they can. But when she's alone, she whiles away the hours maintaining her gardens and doing what jobs she can. But as she approaches 80, some chores aren't as easy as they used to be. And actually, if you're really feeling up to it, see these? They yes. need to be folded up. OK, I can do that. Back to where it was. I'm glad that I can help out and earn my keep. I'm just going to sit down here for a minute. You can just make sure I do everything right. Great. Now, if you could put those, just if we find a spot anywhere. It's sure. A bit of a... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Where the car is. OK. Oh, wow. I'm enjoying this. Just seeing people willingly helping me is just marvellous. The way she just chats away to me, Bet seems to appreciate having company around. Which makes me question why she left the bustle of town life behind. How long did you live in Byron Bay for? 15 years. And I guess most of my happy memories are from there. Really? Oh, yeah. I had lot, lots of dancing, lots of music around the house. I had a view of the sea from the front veranda. I mean, it was, it, yeah, it was a great place. It was a great place then. I think my kids would say that they were brought up there. It was a free time. Free-range kids, that's what I raised in Byron Bay. Free-range kids. After her three eldest children flew the nest, Bet decided to take a trip to northern Queensland with her seven-year-old daughter, Nadia. It was a trip that would change her life forever. This was supposed to be a three-month holiday for me. Went to stay at a wonderful little cottage and I was preparing to sell my house and, and go into this architect-designed house with a bigger view of the sea. And I found my gingerbread house. <laughs> Simple as that, really. I just loved it. I just had to be here. An incredible feeling of I've come home somehow. Bet was so infatuated with this property that she packed up her life in Byron Bay and moved into her newly discovered home in the wild. She was about to embrace a completely new way of life, but so too was her young daughter, Nadia. She was only seven. She didn't have any option. I'm a mum. Poor kid. <laughs> I guess in a lot of ways it was about, you know, having... A young child, I mean, I don't think I really wanted to live the same life over again. You know, being a single mum, I needed another life. I needed something with a bit of adventure. But I didn't really just sit there and think of that. I mean, just all of this just happened, you know, it just happened. It hasn't been an easy life here, but I mean, I always say to the kids, nothing worth winning is ever easy. She describes this like coming home, like it was a love at first sight. She'd brought up her previous children, and she was looking for a new start, a new beginning. And although this isn't everyone's idea of utopia, for Bet it was. That's why I almost use this word destiny. It almost feels for Bet like this was calling her, because that's a huge change of lifestyle. Byron Bay, cool cafes, lifestyle, liberal, music, sociability to then come here, to the middle of the rainforest in, in sort of rural Australia. Bet now has to keep on top of the maintenance of her jungle paradise. See these palm fronds yep. that are growing up in around here? Stop. Am I OK stepping in here? Am I going to...? Well... I'll step gently. Yeah. You, you look out for snakes. No, you look out for snakes. <laughs> Can I sit and watch? Well, why don't you? While there are huge swathes of wilderness, this region of Australia is also known for its agriculture, in particular, the sugarcane industry. Bet, when you first moved here, do you think you had the same attitudes and values as local people? No. 
Not at all. What did your neighbours think of you? This crazy woman. But I just didn't really realise that, you know, most of them were employed in the cane industry, so... I could hear the bulldozers cutting down the trees on the creek beds, pushing the trees into the creek. Because they're filters for our water system on the creek beds. You know, they're really, really important to keep them there. I mean, how can you interfere with the water like that? I was mortified. Twice I've stood in front of the bulldozers and just said, stop! <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? It stopped them. I thought, gee, they could have bulldozed me into the creek and nobody would have known, you know? Mm -hmm. It just added to the animosity against me, I think. I mean, I have been trying to save the environment and do stuff in the community. I have been threatened with a can of petrol to be thrown over the house and had dead wallabies thrown in the driveway. And, and this is by locals that by locals. weren't happy with... Not me being here. And being a feminist as well, because they, they don't didn't understand feminism. They saw it as being a man-hater. Well done for standing up for what you believe in. Well, you've got to stand up for what you believe in. She stuck to her core values. She loved nature and she was sticking up to the values that, that she holds and held close to her heart. Because undoubtedly, it left her slightly isolated here. So this is a beautiful opportunity to speak to someone who was ahead of their time, a true pioneer of, of their own sort of green ethics. And, uh, and for that, I'm, I feel very lucky. A love of nature is something I often encounter on my wild travels. It's my really go-to place when I'm feeling a little bit low and I come down here and this is on the road to my church, I feel, you know. <laughs> I just love it. I always come back from here feeling, from my little trip to the forest, feeling really calm. But I hadn't realised how important it's been to bet over the past three and a half decades. Wait one second. It's my hand here if you need a bet. Thank you. Right. We're taking us on a proper jungle yeah. trek through here. It's a real forest. We're heading to one of Bet's favourite places on her land. And although the terrain is overgrown and unsteady, it doesn't phase my host. Now, take a deep breath. Of course, you won't find the air too much fresher than this. We're in the middle of the forest now. I'm like, breathe in. It's so beautiful. It's like sweet. It's so beautiful. I just love it so much. After walking through thick bush for 20 minutes, we arrive at a creek. Come and sit here. That's good. This is a very spiritual place for me. And I... if you look up there, there's like F lights up there. Mm -hmm. And then there are orchids up there too that bloom. And I've actually sat here and watched platypus play, which has been really, really special. Oh, it's so nice to be here. And sharing it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. I don't normally get like this, but it's just... I don't get to share this with many people. It's just, it's just the way it makes me feel. I just feel, I don't know, it's just, it's just beautiful. I can see the smile and the happiness on your face. I love the, I just love the fact that it's so wild and, yeah, it is my church. It is definitely because I'm sure this is how people must feel when they go into a church. What do you think this sort of environment has given you? Given me peace of mind, I'd say. It makes me feel away from all the troubles of the world when I'm here. I like Bette's attitude to life, and despite the bumps along the way and the struggles that she's had and the hardships she's endured and the very scary experiences that she's had, she has kind of ridden the crest of that wave and she's now here. And having that special place where you just come and listen and absorb and heal. Oh, how beautiful. It's a sweltering 38 degrees in the Queensland wilderness. My host, Beth, isn't quite as mobile as she used to be, so I'm helping out with some of the more physical jobs that need doing. Music to my ears. OK, Beth, I'm going to start spreading this out now. Great.
And looking around in your store area, it looks like you kind of keep things just in case. <laughs> well, you have to do that in the country. I mean, my, my daughter regards it as, as rubbish, but, you know, you can't just pop down the street to get a dozen nails or something or other. Or, you see, like, for this chair, for instance, I call this my queen chair, that I just put together roughly, you know, why would I throw that on the dump? And I'm really conscious about everything that I do put on the dump, because, I mean, we're going to drown in our own rubbish eventually, aren't we? Right, let me spread some of this around. Oh, look at that. How beautiful. Me or the gravel? Oh, both. <laughs> Help change that uh, tire for you. What? The flat tire on there. Well, I had somebody come in to repair it just recently, and that man usually does a really good job. And I just can't understand why that's happened. This man will do a much better job. He's going to get a cold drink. Well, thank you, Ben. That Pleasure. Is absolutely fantastic. Any time. It feels like Bet and I are really starting to bond. I'm grateful that she seems to trust me, given the conflict she's experienced with the outside world. So I think it is difficult to be a woman in a, in a patriarchal society, definitely. And things are slowly changing, thank heavens. Most men are being much more supportive of their wives and girlfriends, but that's only because women have, like, stood up and said, we're not going to take this anymore. But, of course, the reason that a lot of women in Australia are losing their lives is because they are standing up saying, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm not going to be treated like that anymore. It sounds from some of the, some of the things I've heard you say over the last few days that maybe, maybe you haven't had some of the best experiences with men over the years. Um... Well, I'd never been violated by a man, you know, until I came here. And that was really, really scary. Because that had never happened to me in my life before. So... Yeah. Were, were you in a relationship with this yeah, person? Yeah. I was so scared. I was so scared, really. And then he tried to run me down in the car and it was like, I was running. I was so frightened. I realised there was a pattern setting up because the other man that I had a bit of a relationship with, both of those men had really had, you know, I think I'm one of those people that patch people up. Realised there was something happening in my life about that. So you were so, you were effectively attracting or being attracted to broken people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, trying to fix broken people. That's when I took a vow of celibacy. I was in my sixties, and let's face it, if you haven't found what you're looking for by the time you get sixty, I never wanted to be that person sitting at the end of the bar, you know, waiting for Mr. Right to come along. And what would you say your relationship with men is now? Like, do you? I'm curious. In all seriousness, do. Do you feel uncomfortable with me here in your house? No, not at all. I mean, I, I definitely don't hate men, you know, but I really don't like aggressive men. So, the, you know, bottom line, really. That's very fair. More than fair. Recent research estimates that 47,000 women and girls worldwide are killed by their intimate partners or other family members every year. To hear the horrors that Bet experienced has both saddened and shocked me. This is a much bigger conversation between me and Bet in the middle of the Queensland rainforest. You know, there's stories all over the world of the terrible abuse of women at the hands of men. We need to start talking about it more. I, I hope the conversation leads to genuine change because I've seen the damage inflicted on someone like that. It's testament to her character that she's welcomed me with open arms. Away from the unpredictability of people, I've learnt that Bet is happiest when in her wilderness. But another source of joy is her family, and today, her daughter Nadia is making a flying visit from Brisbane. Oh, look who it is, my <laughs> girlie! Hey, Mum. You don't. Hello. Hello. Oh. 
Ooh. You must be Nadia. I am. That's nice to worry. meet you. Yes. I've been feeding your mum some delicious food. Oh, you've got to be joking. You call that delicious? <laughs> it's even worse than my cooking. I was about to say, it takes one to know one. Oh. <laughs> must be nice to be back. It's beautiful to be back. It definitely feels like home. Nadia works as a busy surgeon's consultant, but visits her mum whenever she can. Did you help him quite a lot when you were here as a child? I don't think I helped her at all. <laughs> no, she no. She tells me how I was a lazy little bugger, so... She's made up for it now, that's for sure. Well, listen, I'm, I've been giving your mum a hand with all the chores that need to be done, so you want these planted, do you? Yes, please. Sorry, I can't do it. I'm to do it and help Nadia. Slave yeah, of course. Well, yeah, you can help me at least, Nadia. Where, where do you want them, Mum? I think just down there. Okay. You need to put a little bit of water on them now. She's quite bossy, isn't She's she? She's very bossy. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's great to finally meet Nadia. She moved here when she was just seven and lived here for ten years. I'm intrigued to know what it was like for her to grow up in the wild. I mean, for me, meeting you, this is as much your story as it is your mum's, because you spent your whole childhood here. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing place to grow up. It's only as I've got older that I realise how different this upbringing has actually been. You know, when I think about having to light the fire to have a hot shower, our house doesn't have windows or doors, or you'd come down and there'd be a snake in the house. Often it was just mum and I. But I have really happy memories when I look back on my childhood. Do you think there was a selfishness in her coming here? Was she thinking about the impact it would have on her young daughter? I think she made a decision knowing that she wanted to bring a child up in nature. And I don't know if she necessarily thought about how isolating that could be. And that was the compromise, you know, getting to live amongst this beautiful area versus having a bit more social contact. So, selfish, I don't think so. What, what do you think it was that kind of attracted her to this place? Why did she even come searching in the first place? I don't know if she was looking for anything, but I think when she came here, it was just this immense sense of freedom and connection to nature. Uh, and I don't know if it was something that she actively was looking for, but she, you know, found home or found the place that she was supposed to be. And she's obviously had, to say, a tough time with men in her life is the understatement. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that has tarnished her image of, of men generally? To go through what she has been through uh, and make it out you know, alive, it's made her maybe more cautious. Mm -hmm. I certainly have heard people describe her as a man-hater, and I definitely don't think that's the case. But she would say that she's a strong feminist, and uh, she's proud of it. Are you, are you proud of her? Oh, 100%. I just don't think that people experience the happiness she does. And being able to say that you love where you live, that you love what you're doing, that you get such happiness from really small things, I'm really proud of her for that. You've got a good mum, you do. I do. The old woman is a good woman. <laughs> By any account for both of them, it really was a new life in the wild. And they had this shared journey that, that had its ups and downs. And, and I think it's both made them incredibly strong and resilient and maybe tightened the bond between them. She has such happy memories of this place. She's a solid individual who's gone on to achieve great things. And I think what this proves is that you can still achieve greatness and still live a wild life. Nadia has to return back to Brisbane for work. I'm aware how precious these fleeting moments must be for her and Bet. Bye, Nadia. So Bye. nice to see Bye. you. Bye. I'll look after her, I promise. Thank you. Take you. care. Bye. You take care. I will. You too. Are you taking my dog? He likes me better. Shh. Come on, Sid. Do you miss her when she goes? Oh, terribly. But I've just got to overcome it and bash my head around. Come on, snap out of it. <laughs> I can see how hard it is for Bet to say goodbye to Nadia. So what have we got here, Bet? It's a poem I wrote about the kids leaving home. Anyway, I'll start it off if you like. I'd love to. I'd love to hear it. Time to oneself, what's that? Must pick up the toys, the dolls, the cricket bat. Oh, the lawns need mowing and there's washing to be done. Someone's having a jam down the road. Oh, never mind. I pick up the bong, recklessly left conspicuously, and dream of solitude, tidiness, a place to dream unperturbed. And now we're saying our goodbyes, our farewells. What's this? My heart aches? Tears, 
Where now all the years and empty dreams of solitude? So, yeah, I missed them heaps. I missed having a house full of kids and the place seemed really empty when they left. I missed them heaps. <laughs> but I still do. I wondered if, because of the trauma she'd experienced, Bet was trying to stay away from people. But now I understand that she's just being careful and is in fact someone who loves interacting with like-minded folk. I'm eager to lift her spirits after Nadia's departure. So, this evening, we're going to have a drink and let our hair down. You've got a lot of hair there. Literally. Yeah, and Nadia's always going, can't we just trim the bottom off? And I go, no, I can't, no, just leave it. <laughs> Somebody told me once that you have to see your life as a movie. And then, if you do see your life as a movie, which part do you want to play in that movie? I mean, nobody likes a dribbly movie, do they? <laughs> you want to make it a happy movie. What I have seen of you, Bet, you have made a very happy movie. Well, I hope so, because, um, you know, laughter's the best medicine, and I think if you can put a smile on somebody's face, um, isn't that the best thing? Isn't that the best thing? You put a smile on my face this oh, week. Oh, good. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to understand, I don't think, what that means to me, because since it's such a long time since that's happened in my life. So, thank you so much. But here's thank to you. your fabulous life. Thank you. <laughs> when you live in the middle of nowhere, you don't need to worry about annoying your neighbours, which is good, because tonight, Bet is rocking out. How could anybody not dance to that? It appears there's a side to my host I hadn't seen. Well, when in Rome. I mean, how much joy was there, the happiness. I'm so glad I got to see that side of Bet, just this side that just let it go. Pure, unadulterated, kind of disappearing into your world. And that's kind of what Bet's created here. The simplicity of nature of a house with no windows and no doors. It, it goes to show that many of us are chasing the wrong things. We're chasing expensive cars or holidays or experiences when actually if you strip it all back, sometimes this is all you need. I'm coming to the end of my time in the Australian wilderness. Ben, where are you? We're just here. And this afternoon, Bet's breaking the very first rule she told me about when I arrived. You know how I said I wasn't going to cook for you? <laughs> but, you know, you have been such good company and everything. Oh, Bet. But it's been lovely having you here. The feeling is mutual. I feel very privileged for you to have let me in on your beautiful world here. Mm, thank you. Well, same, same. Have you enjoyed sharing some of your stories and... I experience. have, because it's, I guess, with my friends, I bore them to death sometimes and think, could say, will you shut up? I think I'm just wacky. So it's nice to be able to share it, really. I think I'd rather be called wacky than crazy somehow. Eccentric? Do you know, I looked that up in the dictionary, it says mad. I'm not quite <laughs> sure about that. I can tell you one certainty. Mm -hmm. Your cooking is better than mine. <laughs> well, that's not bloody hard, is it? <laughs> that's not hard at all. <laughs> okay, don't go on about it. <laughs> <laughs> Bess, I suppose, like all of us, is a bit of a contradiction. So she enjoys company, but she also enjoys solitude and, and being on her own. She's eccentric, and yet she's also a little bit shy. But ultimately, this is a woman who doesn't care about what other people think. 
because she has and will live the life and lifestyle that she wants, not the life or lifestyle that other people think she should be living. But I loved just seeing that absolute independence and joy of just being her and the real her. And I'm slightly relieved to see that Bet's retirement isn't solely dedicated to maintaining her land. She also has a passion for arts and crafts, especially making jewellery. And for that, she needs mud. Go away, snakes. You're coming in, snakes. Go away, crocodile. <laughs> The whole idea of making beads. I'm not a Catholic, but I always loved the rosary idea, you know, the, the praying on rosary beads. And these are like my rosary beads, if you like, because they stand for strength, love and hope. So they're my, my happy beads collected from my church, which is pretty special. You've got big balls. <laughs> I noticed my balls are bigger than yours. I did notice. <laughs> and actually, my balls are bigger than they used to be. <laughs> this is what happens with age. I have loved spending time with my mischievous host. And she's proof that age really is just a number. Do you ever think about getting older? <laughs> just about every time I get up to walk around and go, oh, what a bugger. It's about losing my balance and losing my energy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get a bit freaked out going, oh my God, I'm nearly 80. That means I, oh, it's not going to be really good from here. But I mean, the thing is, it's really silly to, to dwell on that because mm -hmm. otherwise you'd get depressed, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? Whatever will be, will be. But who knows what's going to happen? And um, I think I'm privileged to have lived this long. We'd all like to leave some sort of legacy, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, I know, I know what I would like to have on my headstone. Born, died, she tried. <laughs> That's it. What I enjoy so much about what I get to do is that I never know who I'm going to meet. But over the last few years, I found myself moved more, perhaps, by people at the latter end of their lives. And I think it's Maybe because I'm heading in that same direction, that maybe there are some things I'm starting to relate to. But it's also, these are people who have experienced life. So it's actually the bets in this world that I feel really proud that I'm able to share their stories with other people. And let's be honest, selfishly, I, I get to experience all of that myself and, and learn a huge amount that I can take home as a parent and hopefully incorporate it into, into my own life. I'm honoured to have experienced Bet's home here on the other side of the world. But it's time for me to start the long journey back to mine. Oh, Bet. Mm. I hate goodbyes. Me too. Maybe we'll meet again. Oh, that'd be lovely. You never know, you never know. But it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Well, I have learnt a lot from you, so thank you. Oh, thank you. God, it's nice to think that I've taught you something. But listen, keep lighting this place up with your smile and your happiness. Oh, thank you. I'm going to try as hard as I can. I am. Okay. Take care. And you too, Ben. Travel carefully. Bye, Bet. Bye. Look after yourself. Bye. I'm crying. <laughs> uh. Next time, I'm in the Sonoran Desert, California, staying with DNA, an artist who escaped a life on the streets. Once you get a label, it's really difficult to overcome that. And once you're on the street, it's hard to get up. To build a new home out of scrap. It's a 150-foot diameter right here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, I got some big dreams for it. 
And Ben gets to experience those dreams as new lives in the wild continues next Tuesday at nine. Fern Britain's here tomorrow night at nine, sharing secrets with Victoria Derbyshire from a past that shaped the person she's become in the brand new series No Place Like Home. Next tonight, just out of jail, mob boss Sylvester Stallone is rebuilding his crime empire from scratch in a brand new drama, Tulsa King, after the break.